Get full episodes of The Damage Report as a podcast on iTunes and Android, and you can watch the live show every weekday on YouTube TV. We saved the best for last, certainly. Uh, Nomi Kantz joining uh, The Damage Report. Nomi, welcome back to the show. Hey guys, that's so sweet. Well, Way to make is- me cry right before I come on. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it's, it's a pretty <laughs> emotional day, and uh, we're very glad to have you here. Uh, are you in New York right now? I am. I'm. I'm in Astoria in our, our very very small campaign office. You know, for for someone running um, for office, it's a pretty quiet day here because it's election day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's not a lot you can do other than make phone calls and knock on doors and then just wait and pray and hope uh, that everything turns out great. So uh, you are running for a New York City public advocate, and that is uh, obviously a race that we're, we're going to be talking a lot about. Um, on today's election day, though, New York has some some very important candidates that have been getting a lot of attention. Um, what are you looking to see happen, both inside of New York and around the country on election day? So in New York, it's interesting because we, uh, for those of you who don't know, and I did a lot of this reporting at TYT, we had this thing called the IDC. It was eight Democrats who were conferencing with Republicans and they were primaried after many activists organized for years. They were primaried in September and almost all of them lost their primary. Now there's still one more on the ballot here in New York City, Diane Savino, who's being challenged by Jasmine Robinson in Staten Island and parts of Brooklyn. But you know, our state Senate is about to turn. So it looks like one of the key races in New York City is going to be with Andrew Gennardis, who's in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. He is running against the only New York State Senator in, in New York City who's a Republican. And this guy is not your, you know, pro-business Republican. He's he's kind of crazy. I mean, you just Google the guy. He's Marty Golden. His chief of staff uh, helped organize that Proud Boys event that you may have seen um, go social on social. Andrew's a progressive. I've personally you know. He's a dear friend of mine. I'm tonight at his election party, and I'm going to be volunteering right after this. Aside from that, I would go and look at some of these congressional races. Republicans have been pouring a ton of money into New York, into places like Long Island with Pete King, who's being challenged by Luba Gretchen Shirley. And the effects of that are the Republicans are putting so much money into that that area in Long Island that it's affecting down ballot. Uh, that the state senator, uh, John Brooks, and Christine Pellegrino, who's an assemblywoman in a Republican plus 14 district, she flipped that district 40 points just a few months after Trump was elected. And now she's in the fight of her life because of the uh, the top of the ballot, uh, Pete King is trying to protect his seat. So Republicans are in that district and it might have, um, you know, hopefully it'll be Democrats winning across the board. But if Democrats do lose their seats in Long Island, it's probably because of that Republican congressional money being poured into the district. We have Max Rose out in Staten Island running against Donovan. Uh, upstate, there's some great races. Delgado, uh, Dana Balter, uh, they're tough fights. It looks like Delgado is probably going to do well. But, you know, there's not a lot in New York City. There is a, a, a ballot initiative uh, for some charter revisions that are pro-democracy. But, you know, New York is not as blue as we th- we would think. And there are a lot of voting problems right now mm-hmm. where the scanners aren't working because of wet ballots. But, you know, if we had early voting and voting reform with the Democratic Senate, we may not have those issues. Yeah. So, Nomi, uh, it's a great point about Pellegrino. And, and, and that was why people thought there might be a, a blue wave really early on because of the giant 40 point swing in her race and it's the money in politics is maddening and it just is an endless flow. So you win one great race and then they pour more and more money in. And and so, but I, what I'm curious about is the state of the Democratic Party in New York as we stand though because so <laughs> Cuomo, Cuomo won his primary obviously and so he's good, he's set in that sense. But as you pointed out, the IDC got wiped out. Uh, and so, have you felt a disturbance in the force? Right? Have you sensed, uh, has the Democratic Party in New York that is so pro establishment, uh, led by Cuomo, adjusted at all? Has there been a, a recalibration since the IDC was destroyed in the primaries or no? Well, Governor Cuomo, and, and, and this is well reported, Governor Cuomo was the architect of the IDC. You can go back to early articles from a few years ago where he took credit for the IDC, that he designed it. This is not like, who's really behind it? No, he openly said he was behind it, but now he's against the IDC. He flipped very soon, as soon as he saw that they were 
uh, that the IDC was potentially not going to win. He wanted to be with where the wind was blowing. So he is out there. Um, he did a rally with Andrew Gennardis yesterday. He supported him, uh, but so did the progressives. It's he's, He sees the wind is blowing towards progressives. I, now, institutionally within the Democratic Party, does that mean that the Democratic Party will start funding more progressives? Probably not. But that's why it's important. In the next state committee elections, we get progressives in New York State running and going out there and petitioning to be on state committee because the Democratic Party is a reflection of its voting members, yeah. just like the DNC is, just like the county committees are in, in, in the counties who select so many candidates. Well, thank you, uh, Nomi. Great to have you on. Hopefully, uh, we can have you back on in the near future to break down where we go from here, uh, specifically in New York. So thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Talk soon. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.